okay in three phase electrodynamometer type wattmeter in the single phase we gone with a two fixed coils that is f1 and f2 here also the same construction way but the moving coils a and b in the single phase it's a, what is the angle of uh, degree it is connected it is both are perpendicular to each other means both are having the axis of 90 degree but in this case it is of 120 degree here it is shown this is 120 Here, 120 degree a, the angle between moving coil A and B when compared to the single phase. Then here, we just go to the points what uh, it's a construction. In three phase electrodynamic type of power factor meter, there are two fixed coils that is F1 and F2. Yes. Then the two moving coils A and B are arranged that the angle between their plane is 120 degree. This is indicating it's of 120 degree phase uh, difference is there for moving coil A and B. And these coils are connected across the two different phases of the supply. Different phases R, Y, B. The coil A is connected between R and Y. Observe here. This coil A is connected across R and then the cross here uh, across Y. Then the coil B is connected across R and across B. The RB connection is for the moving coil B and for moving coil A R Y it is connected from the supply. Okay. Then as a phase difference between the current currents through the two moving coils is automatically created due to the phase difference between the supply. A current is going to be creating here. Then Hence, the external R and L is not required. In the single phase, we are connecting for the resistance and inductance. I hope you remember. But here, it is not required for that. Then, the moving coils A and B are connected to the supply lines Y and B through series resistance. Here, the connection, what we have done for Y connection and also B connection, here is of a resistance, it is connected. This is what the next point. Next, the phase splitting by the inductance as obtained in the single phase meter is not required in the three phase. As the required by required displacement of current between IA and IB in the two moving coils exists from the supply itself. The difference what it's going for from the supply only it is going to be done. Then the resistance used in series with the moving coils are adjusted such that the current of IY it should be equals to IB. We have to the resistance of the both for the Y connection and also for the B connection we have to adjust in such a way that the current flowing is of IY it should be equals to IB. That's what this is about the construction. Next, what is there in the figure? You just write off those, those only. Okay. Then, what about the working? Here a small derivation is going for. Just we go with the derivation part. The load is three phases. Uh, here the main condition is of it should be a balanced load. Let the load power factor is of cos pi. It's lagging. Hence, each phase current lacks the phase voltage with the angle of pi. Then let V voltage across Ry is the voltage across moving coil A. Then Vrb is voltage across moving coil B. Then pi is the phase angle of the load. Then theta is the deflection of the pointer 
from plane of reference then when it is balanced load we can tell that v r y is going to be equals to v y b that is going to be equals to v b r then let the load is of star connected i hope you remember how we are going to connect the load in terms of a star okay the load what you are going to connect it is in terms of a star connection okay in eci you learned of how a star connection is going to be done in basic electrical lab also you come across what do you mean by star and delta okay when it is of a star connected v r y v r y here v r y is going to be taken as v r minus v y v r minus v y here it is written then v b r r s v r b is nothing but v b because the phase is going to be changed here here v b r means v b minus v r when it is going for v r b means v r minus v b here v r b is nothing but v r minus v b when i take the resultant if i take in the opposite direction i'll be getting of v b r only then v r is going to be equals to v y that is going to be equals to v b are the phase voltages then i l is nothing but the phase current line current is going to be equals to phase current i p h that is going to be equals to i r i y i b when it is a balanced then only i can get of this when it is not balanced load you will be getting the different equations okay we are just assuming that this is let right for that reason then the phasor diagram here across v r v y and v b in between of v r and v b you will be getting as v r b in between of v r and v y you will be getting as v r y the current flowing in between of v y and v r is of i a current and the angle from v r is of 30 degree then across v r v b a current i b it is flowing then one more current that is of i r is flowing with the angle of pi and the angle for the i b current is of 30 degree observe the box what the points are given i a is directly proportional to v r y then i b is directly proportional to v r b here it is given then i a and i b are moving coils currents and i r is the current through fixed coils then what is the condition here our i r the supply from i r is lags then v r by pi degrees that much degree it's going to be lagging okay then we are going to use the torque equation here what we gone with the deriving the torque in the first class of the second module okay the deflection torque of the dynamometer type instrument is given by t is equals to i1 i2 cos pi dm by d theta if the flux density of the magnetic field is uniform then the mutual inductance of m is proportional to the cos theta based on this i can write as mutual inductance m is going to be minus m maximum inductance cos theta then dm by theta means if i differentiate cos pi as cos theta it's of sin theta right minus sin theta minus of minus is going to be plus for the reason m max sin theta then t is going to be changed as instead of writing as dm by d theta i can write as m max sin theta here it is going to be changing as t is equals to i1 i2 cos pi m max sin theta then hence the torque acting on coil a that is ta is going to be taken as ir ia m max cos ir with the angle of ia sin 60 minus sorry 60 plus theta okay then what about the ia ia is going to be taken as k into 
V R Y. Then the angle between I R and I A is of thirty plus pi. To get the I A I A sorry I A I R and I A, observe the phase difference here. I A is here and I R is here. What is the angle of these? Is going to be taken here. That is thirty plus pi. Then I will get the total angle here. That is what here it is taken thirty plus pi. Then sine sixty plus theta. Observe here when a, a deflection is going from at the this axis we are considering for the moving coil A. For this coil A, what is the angle? The total angle it is going for. I will take the some other color. What is the angle for moving coil A with the reference axis is of? It's going to be sixty plus a theta, right? Then only for the tack for getting for the moving coil A, it's going to be sixty plus theta only. For the reason here, it is taken as sine sixty plus theta for torque at the moving coil A. Why I A is taken as K into V R Y because the supply what we given for moving coil A is of R and Y. For the reason here, it is going to be V R Y. Then T A is going to be equals to. I am substituting for I. I A as K into V R Y, I R as as it is, K M X as it is, cos. I'm substituting for the angle between I R and I A, that is 30 degree plus pi, then sine 60 plus theta. Then we know that V R Y is going to be equals to square root of 3 into V R. This we derived, that is V square root of 3 into V is going to be the power, right? V gone here. It is taken in terms of phase. That is, therefore, what I can change instead of writing as V R Y, I can write as root three into V R. T A is equals to root three into K instead of V R Y. I have substituted root three into V R. V R I R M X cos Thirty plus pi sine sixty plus theta. This is for coil A be finished. Then for coil B, T B is going to be I R. The current flowing is of I B M X cos for moving coil B. I R with I B sine one twenty degree plus theta. What we want? We want I B. What is where is our I B? I R I B. We want this only of this angle. But here, if I want only of this means, what here? I R into I B, right? I R into I B. This whole is of thirty, right? Thirty minus pi. If I do, I will be getting of what is the angle between? I R and I B. For that reason, here it is taken as 30 minus pi. Then, how it is taken for sine 120 plus theta? Here we go from the main figure. Here the moving coil B is here. The reference is of here only. Okay, this. Is our theta 120 plus theta? Here it is taken. Then I B is equals to K into V R B. Then substitute for V R B is equals to root three into V B. Then T B is equals to substitute V R B as root three into K. V B I R M X. Here substitute for the angle cos 30 minus pi. Then sine 120 plus theta. The pointer attains steady state. 
theta when ta is going to be equals to tb when both are equal then one more condition here vb is equals to vr both the voltages are going to be equals to the phase voltage that is vph for the balanced system then then only our ta is going to be equals to tb then when i equate the equation for ta and also for the tb ta is going to be equal to tb then this whole functions are going to be cancelling off what i will be lifting here cos 30 plus pi sin 60 plus theta is going to be equal to cos 30 minus pi then sin 120 plus pi when i do a small calculation here you can get that is theta is going to be equals to the pi therefore the angular position taken by the pointer from the plane of reference is equal to the power factor angle of the load to which the meter is connected. This is what we derived from the equation. Which means how much the deflection is going in the how much the deflection is going that is about theta how much deflection is going the same is your pi angle means the power factor angle it may lag or it may lead we don't know of that okay for that reason based on the theta we can tell that that the value pressure on supply it may be leading or it may be lagging this is how you have to go for this is very important it may ask for eight marks or else six marks in some question paper they may ask for six or else eight marks question which is very important okay then what are the advantage the advantage of meter is of the reading is independent of the waveform and frequency supply the currents in the moving coil a and b gets affected equally by the changes in the frequency and hence effect is nullified the main disadvantage is whatever the equation we taken it is for the balanced loads but to getting a balanced load it is a big risk in the real time application therefore the two elements power factor meter can be used having two set of fixed coils and two set of moving coils when we use this we can uh, avoid of uh, balancing uh, when it is of unbalanced we can balance by using of two sets of moving coil and also of the fixed coils this is adjustment we have to go for when it is of a unbalanced okay this is about the three phase power factor meter in this first you have to write draw the construction what is there in the construction you just go through of the then after the construction what it is there then go for the derivation part working first you will draw the phasor diagram then write your individual voltage and also for current then take the tack equation then tack equation for current current coil a and coil b then equate both then you will be getting as theta is equals to pi okay this is one topic next we go with the next one more topic that is here is a phase sequence indicator what is the necessary of phase sequence indicator the connection from the supply it may be in terms of ryb connection or else the reverse of that rby connection okay based on whether it is ryb only to check that we are using of two types of phase sequence indicators in that the first one is a rotating type phase sequence indicator here this is a, uh, what we are going to use in a practical way in an outside system here the phase sequence indicator here is of a coil disk we call this based on this we three phase uh, the color is here is there right this ryb connection will be applied for the supply where it is there from that 
when it is uh, rotate it will starts rotating in one direction if it is in clockwise direction we can tell that it's of a ryb connection okay the phase is of if it is in reverse means rby okay the same how it is going to be done we are here it's go with points the main principle working principle of a rotating type is of induction motors based on the magnetic field how it is going to be inducting okay working principle is of based on the inductance motor in this coils are connected in star form here i shown the coils are connected in star form this is a connection and the supply is given from three terminals marked as r y b r y b as shown in this figure then when supply is given the coils produced produces the rotating magnetic field and these rotating magnetic fields produces an eddy emf eddy current is going to be induced in the motor when supply is given this is ryb connection supply is going to be checked here these are the terminals of the coils this uh, these terminals are nothing but this wires what is there this is main supply from the main supply you are going to take and this is our disc and direction of the rotation same figure okay you can compare with the figures here eddy emf is going to be induced in the movable aluminum this disc is nothing but this is of aluminum made of aluminum for that reason taken as aluminum disc as shown in the diagram okay then this eddy emf produces the eddy current on the aluminum disc eddy currents interact with the rotating magnetic field due to this a torque is going to be produced which causes the light aluminum disc to move due to the magnetic field our disc starts rotating it will start rotating okay this is how it is going to be checked then if the disc moves in the clockwise direction then chosen sequence is of ryb and if the direction of the rotation it is of in anti clockwise then the sequence is of rby how it is taken here i shown with the example here ryb is connected when it is in rotating in a clockwise and it is going for a clockwise ryb connection when it is rotating in the anti clockwise direction then it is rby okay the same thing here it is shown when it is of positive sequence vr vy and vb when it is of a negative sequence then r b y make the difference here here positive means r y b if it is of negative sequence means r b y each phase is uh, differing by angle of 120 degree each okay this is about the rotating type phase sequence indicator one more is of static type phase sequence indicators in the static type the supply is given here we are going to use of the lamps based on the lamps we are deciding whether it is of ryb or else rby connection okay here when the phase sequence is of ryb when it is of ryb then the lamp 2 this lamp 2 will glow brighter than lamp 1 and if the se uh, sequence is reversed means rby if i am going for then lamp 1 is going to be glowing brighter than lamp 2 okay the this is how it's going to be based on this construction okay then hence we assume that the phase sequence is of ryb then voltage as vry and vrb and vbr based on this actual derivation is going for it's no need no need of those directly taking the equation we will be getting as vry is equals to v then vyb is going to be v into minus 0.5 minus j 0.866 for vbr you will be getting as v minus 0.5 plus j 
point eight six six. Okay, then when it is of a balanced operation, then our V V R Y is going to be equals to V B R. That is going to be equals to V by B. Now that is nothing but the main supply is of V. Then algebraic sum of all the phase current is also equal. Based on this, I can write as I R that is plus I Y plus I B is going to be equals to zero. When you solve for this on solving the above equation, we have the ratio for I R and I Y. You'll be getting as the value as point two seven. Okay. Based on this, we can decide that it implies that the voltage across lamp one is only twenty seven percent. Of that of the lamp two. Hence, from this we can uh, conclude that the lamp one will glow dimmer in case of R Y B phase sequence, while in case of reversed lamp two is in a dimmer than lamp one. Okay, small twenty seven percent means its uh, brightness is less. Okay. This is one we are going for. Yes, we can based on the brightness or else the dimmerness, we can judge that it may be R Y B connection or else R Y R B Y connection. But the lamps what we are going to use, it's of a normal bulbs what we are going to use here. The bulbs it may glow in a brighter way or else even though it's of R Y B, our lamp too will glow in a dimmer fashion. In such cases, what So what's the result we are getting? It's in a wrong way. Yes. To avoid that, we are going for one more construction. Here is a. Instead of going for the bulbs, we are going to use of the neon lamps. Normal bulbs. Instead of that, we are going for the neon lamp. What is the uh, advantage of using of the neon lamps? The ne neon lamps it will glow when a minimum breakdown voltage we have to apply. Minimum voltage it has to be applied from the supply. When minimum voltage is applied, then only it will starts conducting. Means it will starts brightening. Brightening is go more for the neon lamp. That is one advantage using of the neon lamp. Okay, we will go with the points. What's given? There is another kind of phase sequence indicator which is work as the previous one. The inductor is replaced by the Capacitor. Yes, the construction way. In the previous, here it is of taken as inductor. Instead of that, here we are going for the capacitor. Then two neon lamps are used along with them. Is see uh, two series resistors are also used. Here it is not shown. It is internally connected. Why is the necessity of uh, resistors? It will be limiting the current for that reason, and to protect the neon lamp from breakdown voltage. In this indicator, if the supply phase sequence is of R Y B, then lamp one will be glowing, and lamp two will be in the off position, or else it will not glow. Okay, and if it is reversed, then lamp one will not glow, and lamp two will be glowing. This is how it is going to be working here. These are all things we are learned in the module two. Okay, phase sequence indicators, frequency meters. Okay, from this we'll complete of the second module. We left with the problematic part. Next we'll go. I will tell on Friday. I will be thinking of 